Following on from filtering, let's have a look at pivot tables. So the first thing to do is to clear our filter off here. We don't need it anymore. Um, and again, press Control Home to get back to the beginning and do Control Shift Left and Control Shift Down to select all your data. And now go Insert Pivot Table. And on this UI, select a new worksheet. So now this is going to be our pivot table. When thinking about pivot tables, what I want you to imagine in your head is what rows and columns you want in your data, what the headings you want are, and then Excel will do all the aggregation of the data and the summing or the averaging and put it in the intersection. Let's have a look at that in practice. So quite often what we want to see is um, all of the participant numbers down in one column. So let's go and find our participant number. Here's our participant private ID, and I'm going to put that in a row like that. Now, in this particular data set, we've only got 11 participants, but if we had hundreds of participants, it would still be this straightforward. Now, the other thing we might want to do is, or we might want to see how many correct answers each one of those gave. So let's um, scroll down to here, correct, and here's, that's the sum of correct. Now, instead of doing the sum of correct, let's instead go here and do the count of correct, and that should show us that everybody did 18 trials. Now that's not right. Let's go back and have a look at our data. Each person did only seven trials. Where's that 18 coming from? And it will be coming from the fact that um, Excel is looking at all of those. That's 18. But of course, this doesn't only have the response button image zone. So what we want to do is we want to limit the zone type. Let's go back to sheet sheet one and find the zone type. Go zone type and I'm going to put this as a top level filter up here which allows me to, I can do select multiple items but in this case actually all I want is the response button image and now that we can see we had seven responses from each participant. Now we could have a look at this. Uh, now, how many did each one get right? We can change this from the count to the sum. And that will give us how many each one got right. Now, another thing you might want to do is to look at how participants performed on each stimulus. So let's go and find out that column name, the stimulus column name here is puzzle. So if I go down to puzzle and I drag this into the column, you can actually see how each participant did on each puzzle. So this one got one to four correct and then didn't get five, six, and seven. Uh, similar pattern here. But then this person, very committed to getting all of them right down here as well. Now, if we remove the participant ID from here, you can see how many you can see which are the hardest puzzles and which are the easiest puzzles. And if you remove puzzles, then you can see which is the top performing participant and which is the least strong participant. So that's a beginner's guide to pivot tables, but there'll be another video after this.